Hey, BMB. We've affectionately titled this episode as The Passion of the Fanatics. We'll take a look at the positives and negatives of extreme fandom, or what we like to call regular fandom. We'll also take a look at the results of the collector's poll we just put out. And of course, we'll include our regular collector tip, Easter eggs, and Star Wars news. And don't forget, we're giving away a retro set at the end of the show. The Force runs strong with this pod. Pass on what you're about to learn. You tuned in to the Hollow Chronicles! Give me five and ready. What is up, the BMB? How's it going, Andy? I'm great, Josh. It's fun and exciting to enjoy your presence once more. <laughs> no good out here anymore. Only dreamers like this. Well, uh, welcome into the Hollow Chronicles. Thanks for listening. And of course, you can always follow us at Hollow Chronicles on Twitter, at Instagram, YouTube, and all the other special places uh but we're glad to be here today yeah thanks for the listen thanks for sharing with a friend let's get going andy um we're gonna change kind of the order up and if you've ever listened to us we kind of have a routine a bit or at least we try to but this one we're gonna try and hustle through some things and and make this a little bit of a shorter pod we'll see if that actually happens we've said that before (laughs) it always ends up being about an hour long but sure um but yeah we're gonna change it up and we're gonna start with Easter eggs. Right off the bat, Easter eggs. Easter egg. Your Star Wars Easter egg for this for this episode uh, has to do with the movie Independence Day. Josh, are you familiar? Yeah, Will Smith, late '90s, excellent movie. It is a classic from my. I mean, a little over the top with the with you know everything, which was great <laughs> with with uh, yeah everything. Uh, all right, so um, I'm just gonna read because that makes for good pod audio pod. Um, I'm just going to read the um, description here. Fans may not see too many parallels between Roland Emmerich's Independence Day and the Star Wars saga, but that doesn't mean the director and crew weren't massive fans of George Lucas' series. When the alien invaders are first detected by Earth scientists, this is in uh, Area 51, sure, um, where, where Data worked. Data? Yes, uh, from Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. We always have with Star long hair. Yeah, with the long, long-haired Data. Uh, Dog on it. What's his name? I, I actually, what's his name? I know. Anyway, moving Data. on. His name is Data. Yeah. When the alien invaders are first detected by Earth scientists, it's easy to miss the computer monitor showing a model of deep space satellite Devlin, named for the movie's co writer and producer, Dean Devlin, and resembling a scaled down version of the Death Star. Really? Yeah. That's pretty interesting. But it's not the only Easter egg in the movie. What? <laughs> yeah. And we'll put a picture of this up on Twitter. Um, after this pod drops tomorrow, um, hopefully tomorrow, but um, there is a tiny. Uh, it, it, it's it's hard to spot, but when the movie shifts to the underground uh, hangar area where they have the spaceship, yeah, that they've I don't know that wrecked there a long time ago in the basement of Area Fifty One, the hangar storing the captured alien spaceship is marked very clearly. There's this big, you know, metal door entrance. And on either side of the metal door, there is a massive R on the left and a two on the right. Really? Yeah, just R straight up R two, huh? Big letters and big letter and not a coincidence. um, Right on the walls on the other side of the door, because R is a common letter and so is two is a common number. Pretty common. Well, maybe it is a coincidence. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Nah, we'll we'll take it. Anyway, we'll show you the picture um, on Twitter. R2 was a pro at opening doors, I'll tell you that much. So why not? Not a coincidence. It was around the door. Um, So yeah, there's your... Excellent. And by the way, it's Brent Spiner or Spinner or Spiner. 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 Brent Spiner. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. You're absolutely. Thank you for looking that up, Josh. You're welcome. He's the master of... uh, Scholar and a gentleman. And <laughs> slash producer and thanks sound voiceover guy. Don't give me the sound. You've got a right. lot of good uh, impersonations in yeah, there. And I'm just learning about these. I didn't know this about you, but yeah. As we do this pod, we've oh you've got a good oh. you've got a good um, uh, emperor sure, and you've got a really good salacious crumb. 
And um, what was the one that you just did? Akbar. Akbar. Yeah, I'll Akbar. give you my Akbar when it's appropriate. Yeah, we'll we'll get to Akbar in just one second. Show me your collection. Now, Josh, every Saturday we like to feature a follower's collection, um, but we didn't this week. We didn't? No, we didn't. We actually did not feature... You dropped the ball? Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Andy's the, know, collector, the collection collector. He, he, he collects everything, even your collections. <laughs> <laughs> I collect four for you, and, and, I, and I take your stuff, too. But we had some good collector talk. Yeah, we did. I think that's where you're going to go. There. So, absolutely. Um, I put on a poll in, on Saturday because I knew I hadn't ahead of time lined up a collection that uh from anybody that wanted theirs to be featured and you know that usually takes me seeking some people out sure um but instead i thought well let's get a collector conversation going so i put a poll up um and the poll was do you collect exclusively star wars because most of the people who we follow and who follow us are star wars related right and so, uh, so I put up there, are you exclusively a Star Wars collector for those that collect, or is Star Wars just part of your collections? Is it, you know, is it the most that you collect, or is it just, you know, one shelf on uh, many shelves of collecting things? You know, is it, is it just... And by the way, that's assuming that, you know, anyone that collects has shelves. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's about... What you got in the drawer, or the bin, or in the attic? Yeah, in the really, attic, absolutely. It doesn't have to be on display. It could just be that you, you have, acquire things. And you have some things. At yeah. some point, you'll put them up, and it just hasn't happened. And so the results of the of the poll ended up being about a third of the people that voted said that they were Star Wars exclusive, right? And then about two thirds said they collected other things as well. Um, now, specifically, you know, it varied, but. Um, and it wasn't like, not everybody that voted was like Star Wars first and everything else second. But there were, you know, people that collected other things and also happened to have some Star Wars sure. stuff too. So, like, they were big into other things, but they also have, you know, like a drawer full of Star Wars sure. stuff. And so, um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to shout out a few people that responded. Like, so when people commented, like, um, and I said, hey, you know, if you collect other stuff too, tell me what it is. And so um, there was, uh, let's see, Vindiana Jones. Yeah. Um, seems like a pretty cool guy. Great he's, name. He's into a lot of stuff. Like, he listed to me in our DMs like eight different things that he collects, and Star Wars was one of them. And I got the feeling that it was just... He collected other things more prominently than he did Star Wars, but but he did have a Star Wars section in his sure. collections. Um, so he's into all sorts of things. Indiana Jones stuff, of course, because of the name, um, Vindiana. Uh, then there's uh, our longtime follower, uh, Vader, uh, Vader Rapina. He said he has, uh, he's kind of got a pretty good collection of wrestling belts. Okay, that's... Very cool. That's unique, yeah. you know, and that's I don't know anybody that has that for a collection. So, like that was that was cool. I'd never even considered. I feel like if you have a collection of wrestling belts, you get to celebrate victories in a way better way than the rest of us. You know what I'm saying? Probably. Like imagine walking through the door and just discount double checking every time. Well, it, you know, I want to hear something funny. This is a side note. We didn't talk about this, but uh, so I'm a math teacher. Sure. Right? I teach middle school weirdos math. Yeah. And um, they're good kids. I have a math belt. Oh, wow. For the student that does the best on a test, they get to wear it for a week. Right. And they have to be seen in the hallways with it. Do they do like an elbow drop onto a desk in order to get that? <laughs> onto or? a math book? Right. No. Um, they just have to uh, wear it. They can take it home you know, and show it to their parents. And all it is is a WWF belt. That's turned upside down, so it looks it's like an M. A, so it's an M. So it's w. a it's a double W, but flipped upside down. It looks like M -m 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 math. An M. So it's the math belt, and yeah. uh, and whoever gets the best test score owns the belt. But it, they get challenged, you know, just sure. like in real wrestling. They don't get to keep it forever. No, there's always another challenge. Always one. So uh, anyway, I you know ask I Mean think Gene Vader. 
I think you'd appreciate that. But that Good. was cool. That, that's cool. You know, wrestling belt collection. Like, that's cool. Sure. Um, I never would have thought about that. Um, uh, good favorite listener, Matt. He's into uh, sports cards and autographs of, right. you know, outside of Star Wars. Um, Roger Roger had a poster. He posted a poster that seemed like it had 100 autographs on it of mm. Friday the 13th related people. He, he, has a, crazy. he has a Friday the 13th collection. Excellent. I love some signatures. Yeah. And so I, you know, I automatically uh, knighted him as the go-to expert for Friday the 13 things. because There it is. I know very little about that. Um, tip of the hat to you, Roger Roger. Sure. Well, it has to do with the calendar and the day of the week. Just saying. <laughs> I get it, dad joke. Yeah. Um, uh, I keep it light. <laughs> Tom uh, Trollton. He's into some Masters of the Universe. He he posted a picture of a few shelves that had figures I on them. I have the power. Yeah. And don't you have some Masters of the Universe? I though? do. You going to keep it? Uh, no, it's on the bin, but hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Tom? Tom? Tom, hit me uh, up, Tom. Meet, meet Josh. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, and then Star Wars Galore also mentioned that uh, uh, he or she, I don't know, or if it even matters, uh, that they also. So you're saying you're in, you're implying that there's a, a, a gal out there named Thomas, or what'd you say? Star Wars galore. Oh, I thought you said. Tom. I'm sorry, my bad. Yeah, you're bad. Uh, they they're into they've gotten into some uh, some pop funkos uh, of the Marvel variety. Ooh, so funk hole. They're going down the funk hole there. So anyway, um, instead of featuring uh, a listener or a follower's. Um, collection star wars collection what we did kind of alternately was talk about other things that people were into because um josh both you and i are not star wars exclusive no we are mainly star wars no it's the first thing i loved was star wars um for sure but uh for me and this actually this leads right into incoming transmission um, Matt asked us a question. Uh, I have it written down here. How long ago did you get serious about collecting? So this ties in perfect. So Josh, how long ago did you, and and maybe Star Wars or not, when did you start, when did you decide that you kind of want to start collecting? Because I know, uh, I won't put words in your mouth. Yeah, collecting is an interesting term because, you know, collecting usually implies that you, you know, have the means to do it. I, I don't know, as a, ki- as a kid, you know, like baseball cards and those kind of things would be the easiest things to collect because low on cost, et cetera. I didn't do any of that, but I always did keep the toys that I loved kind of hidden away. But to be honest, when I really got serious about collecting, like where I was buying things and leaving them in their package, which is not a kid thing to do, no, uh, was, was very early on in like my early twenties. Um, and I went Lord of the Rings, like, like all in. in. Yep. I've seen so the, the, yeah, the Lord of the Rings and I have bins and bins tubs. full of tubs full of Lord of the Rings and and much like our my current Star Wars room, I had a Lord of the Rings office and and it was impressive in its own right. I have sword, you know, I have like some of the 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 shards of Narsil, the shards and, of Narsil, and, and, you know, number Sting. Sting. I do have Sting. Uh uh, Legolas's blades. Yes, uh, yes, you do. Golly. Now, before King, Witch Kings, you know all that cool stuff. I've seen. Now, I've seen all this. This was what your office was before. It was before we met. I went Star Wars. <laughs> I went all in on Star Wars. <laughs> and and by the way, that was just a trading of the bins. <laughs> Swapped out some yeah, bins. Swatched out. Swapped them out. So you were in your early twenties when you decided that. I think it was just about having disposable income and not a lot but like saying like okay i'm going to invest two or three hundred dollars you know over the course of four or five months into buying these figures and like i said keeping them in the box kind of separate i don't know if that's how you define the collector but it did define me as like look i'm serious enough about this that i want to keep them pristine mm-hmm. i want I, I hung them up and i looked at them but i didn't take them out now i did have a moment where i was like I'm taking out all my doubles, and I did, which, good or bad, I don't know. If you go back on Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, stuff right now, it's it's not that high up on the chart as far as value, but it might be. I don't know. It'll be 20 or 30 years old someday, right? So, uh, 
Uh, I took it out and I let my kid, my my youngest daughter, play with him. I made her watch the movies with me, and and to this day, she is a massive Lord of the Rings fan. We went and watched the live Lord of the Rings uh, orchestra as they played live to the movie, which was fantastic. I mean, it was a really cool time in my life, but it wasn't, you know, uh, Tolkien obviously is is fantastic, but you know, Star Wars was always my passion, so. But it was fun. That, that's when I became a. That's when I knew I was a collector because I was doing stupid stuff, spending money I didn't have, and that kind of thing. Yeah, for me, um, not that being a collector means you have to do stupid stuff. No, <laughs> uh, but it does sometimes, sometimes go with the trade. Sometimes the, uh, we can all think of a stupid thing that we've bought over the years that maybe hindsight, eh, probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Um, but for me, Star Wars. I, I liked Star Wars mostly because of my older cousins they were they were into it so I you know I would get their hand me downs and so that meant I'd get a Star Wars shirt every now and sure. then or some underoos or whatever and oh, uh, really? hand me down underwear no good man. well we get the shirts but not the, okay. not the <laughs> hand me down not underwear. the shorts <laughs> <laughs> but um uh, I you know I was into GI Joe pretty hard in my grade school years and my mom kept all that stuff and my brothers and I are close enough in age that we kind of all got into it together and I got out of it first because I was the oldest but they stayed into it and anyway mom kept all that stuff so I had a I had a built in um, and my brothers didn't want their stuff anymore and so I I have a built in GI Joe set that was pretty extensive for a long time and uh, I decided that. I was going to keep, or I'd sell all the doubles and, and keep just like from 82 to 85, you know, just keep that stuff. And cause it, cause they're still making GI Joes. And it's yeah. like, I mean, you could really go deep down that rabbit hole and some people do and good on them for that, but I chose not to. And so I, I really whittled down everything and then I used that money to kind of start what I really wanted to do. And that was, um, that was really get into. I didn't get serious ab- about collecting Star Wars figures and toys. Um, it was probably, truthfully, it was about 10 years ago. Right. Um, I had been picking up things along the way for the last 20 years, um, ever since The Phantom Menace came out. Um, I didn't get any of those figures or toys because at that point, I knew everybody was going to do that. And so... And and I'd always been drawn to 1977 because it was the year I was born, year we were born. Right. And so anything 1977 Star Wars, I you know magazines. I I grabbed a lot of magazines, um, uh, Star Quest and and uh, Rolling Stone and you know I, I I was drawn to the magazines and and kind of the posters um, from the original Star Wars era. That's kind of how I'd started dipping my toe into that, and then. About 10 years ago, that's when I decided, okay, here's what I want to do. Figures and toys. Let's do it. And then really over the last five years is when I've set goals. You know, right. It was just like 10 years ago, it was like if I came across them, sure. Five years ago, it's like I made a checklist. I started checking off boxes and seeking out specific things instead of just if I happen to come across them. So it's almost like we're doing like kind of the collector tip here at the same time. Because you you said something there, and as parents out there, if you're listening to the pod, if your child loves something, and maybe it goes away for a little bit, pack it up in a bin. Yeah. Put it up in the attic. Legos are still going to be fun to play with, no matter how many years go by. Kids are going to love Legos. And I thank God that my parents exactly that's all of that stuff. You said that. Mom started stuffing it away, and it's like, that's a pretty cool thing. So that's a good collector tip right there, is as a parent... Even though you may think it's... Uh, yeah, go ahead, hit it. Hello, what have we here? Collector tip! As a parent, take care of your kids' collections. Because, uh, you know, and I have daughters, so my collect- their collections are vastly different than my collections at <laughs> their age. Uh, but, you know, like pet shops and something weird like that. I, my, my, my daughter still is angry at me because we went into a Ross, and there was a pet shop, like, set... And it was maybe twenty dollars, mm-hmm. and it was huge. You know, at Ross, they always used to be more, like a hundred. It was twenty dollars, and even to this day, she's like, "Dad, do you know how much those are worth?" <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, sorry," and I really feel bad as a collector for not uh, hitting you up on that. So yeah, good collector tip. So collector combo. That's actually better than the collector tip I was going to say. So uh, yes, as parents, 
be ready to start what might eventually be your kids' ah, collection. Your kids are going to fall on your footsteps. They understand what's going on. They laugh and they call me nerd when they walk by my office, but they also show their friends. They're, they're collectors. Sorry. Yeah, my son, my oldest son does that too. Yep. He, for the first time this year, was like, what are you going to do with those? And there was just a pile of extras, you know, and I was like, well, I was, I was just, they were extra. I got them in a lot that I bought from somebody, and he was like, well, what are you going to do with them? I'm like, I was probably going to sell them. Mm. Can I have some of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, yes! Awesome. We have something in common. We have collections. And so uh, this is where the passion of being a fan gets to be fun. You get to share right. with your kids. You get to buy things and put them on display. This is... This is a positive of being a fan, short for fanatic. You don't, like, people are passionate about different things. Sports teams, movies, cars. Motorcycles. What, yeah, I mean, everybody's got their hobby or their thing that they're into. I mean, hopefully family's up there somewhere. <laughs> but um, Well, it's doing it with your family, too. Yeah, but right? that's, see, that's what makes it all better. If you can do it with your buddies or with your family or with your kids, like it's going to make it go from a hobby to meaningful. And, and the best rewarding. hobbies are yeah. the ones that are rewarding. Exactly. So this is, this is a positive about fandom. You get to show your appreciation by putting your time and energy and money and, and into things that have value to you. Absolutely. Um, so that, that is a positive of being a fan. And again, the title of this podcast, the passion of, of the fanatics right and we are passionate about our collections um i i am to the point where i buy things that i don't need because i think somebody else might right um good bad or otherwise i i do that sometimes and sometimes they say no i'm good and i'm like okay well now i got all this stuff um cool (laughs) (laughs) trade bait for later um so we've we've done. God, we're we're hustling through this we're stuff. We're good, here, man. Josh. Um, I also to throw in there, Josh. Have you have you picked up anything lately? I did. It just hasn't shown up. But yeah, I got. So did, wait, we talked about it. I think last time. So yeah, I'm good. So if it's not actually in your possession, I have not gotten anything. <laughs> we're not. We're not gonna. We're not gonna talk about it. Um, you got it. I had a. a, a Would you get? Andy? Well, I had a thrift shop owner. Send me a text this week. Hey, we got in some Star Wars stuff, and he shot me a couple pictures, and I'm like, yeah, I'll take that and that. And it was a original white Tie Fighter. Um, the motor had froze on it, clean. And, and if you, yeah, it's in it's in really good shape. But you know, the light lit up when you put batteries in it. The battery compartment wasn't corroded, um, and that in and of itself is a victory because if you can find uh, any of the old Star Wars toys, any toy for that matter, that's you know over 20 years old, it has a battery compartment, and you can see copper yeah it's not green or fuzzy or yep. anything um you can you can get the motors in those star wars toys to unfreeze if you're just patient enough to unscrew a few screws and then just constantly press the button and with your finger move the little uh gear on the motor and then eventually it'll it'll unfreeze you don't even have to use wd-40 or anything it, that 90 percent of the time yeah <coughs> excuse me a motor will unfreeze with just a little bit of TSC. Yeah, it's a fun victory. It is a fun victory. And if you follow us on Twitter, I posted a picture or a little video of a, it's just, it sounds like a screaming. It does. Sounds very, <laughs> just screamy. Yeah, it's very screamy, but that's what those motors sounded like. It's well, like a, a, it's a uni- <laughs> Just Screaming through the space. Yeah. And then also I picked up a little uh, land speeder. Cool. But it was in really good shape. So, yeah, so I felt good about that. There These you go, are, collectors. Um, keep your networking skills up. Um, Josh, we are going to give away a Target Retro we are. set of figures, six figures that are allegedly um, not being restocked in Targets anymore. That's what we heard. We've There's heard that Twitter going on in there. a couple of different places um, that if they're gone, then they're gone. And I don't know if we'll see or or what's left in Target stock. They aren't sending out any more. And to we stores. have heard that they're going to re-release later on, which fine. We've heard that about a lot of things, but there's nothing like the ones that, that are Target, you know, that are exclusive when when you got them. So I we'll see. 
right? Yeah, we're keeping our eyes open, but uh, if this is the last run of them, then then one of our followers um, is going to get a set tonight. Nice. We're gonna we're gonna pick a winner, but that's just teasing it for later. Nice tease. That's By just... the way, follow us on at Holla Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely. Star Wars news. Let's get to the meat. So the news of the week um, brought about the title of the pod, The Passion of the Fanatics. There's been a lot in the fandom, uh, large sense of fandom, not specifically like the fandom menace, although they are part of it. Sure. Um, there's, been going on, uh, there's been a lot going on with the fans in the last week, and I've seen it a lot on social media. People have been a little salty towards each other, um, different groups, fandom menace, being one of them, not, not that, to call them out. Yeah, not that not that they were in the wrong or that they were in the right, but uh, they seem to be a part of it, um, or those that call themselves part of it. Um, well, I'll just I'll just get to it. There was um, there was a guy that works uh, for Collider. He's a he's a podcaster um, named Christian Harloff. Uh, he was quoted this week, and and uh, in response to Galaxy's Edge opening up, and and he didn't, he felt like he was deserving of like a first look pass, if I understand my context correctly. Yep. And his quote was, "I've been busting my bleeping bleep being a Star Wars <laughs> fan for five bleeping years." Oh, is he, is he a droid? Yeah, he is. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's a R two mix, but um. Yeah, for the younger ears that might be listening, uh, we'll bleep those words out um, in a literal sense. And and a lot of people were giving him heat, but like he's been a for five years. Like a lot of people look at that five years part of the sure. comment and they scoff at it. Like five years, give me a break. Like we've been doing this for forty years. We've been fans for forty years, being passionate about Star Wars for forty years. You can do whatever you want for five years. That's nothing. You know, that's right. a car loan. You know, whatever. Um, and so he was taking some heat for that. And then also, Josh, just as a side note, what does it mean to bust your A being a fan? Well, you know, <clears throat> if I would if I would play like devil's advocate here, I would say oh, uh, he may be talking about his medium, right? Like which hasn't existed as long as Star Wars has, and that's podcasting and or YouTube as far as popularity. So he might have just been a little misguided in his approach. Obviously, he's a fan of Star Wars, but that comment of five years doesn't hold a lot of weight, right? Like, oh, okay. To a lot of people, it doesn't. Sure. So I I don't know. I mean, I think being a fan of Star Wars, is that that was your question, right? What is it? Well, I mean, how do you, as a fan, how do you bust your ass? Qu- yeah. I, yeah. How do you, I mean, as a fan, like he does... This is let me. This let me, is his job. Well, but it's his job. But I, but I, I would say it did not start out as his job. No, all right. So, okay. So, fair, and fair. and that is very important. We have to remember that. Like any of these things that turn into a business, you know, apparatus are usually built on followers, and usually that's because an interest. Yeah, an interest. Yeah, interest. Followers equals interest. But and that's because somebody put the time and the effort with no pay. To get it out there. So I would give him credit as far as that's concerned. I get what he's saying. His presentation sucked. That's it. But then to be judged by your presentation, well, and also you're on a uh, a, a you know a public forum, kind of throwing a fit. That's the kind of fit you have in the back room where you're like, darn it, I should have been chosen. You know, and then you come out and you and you just put on the good face. But on the other hand, it could be the thrust of their of their tactic. I mean, that's that's their pod they've and, gotten a lot of eyeballs this week that collider's gotten a lot of eyeballs this week for i that told video. you that before the pod i'm like i never even heard these guys and now i'm watching their video like any press is good press when it comes to you know i don't know we should say something inflammatory so that we can get some <laughs> a few more followers but we won't because we're a positive pod but i mean you know i that's that's what i'm saying is like if you drop a couple f-bombs and and throw a little bit of hissy about you know as part you know the description i heard is that they're one of the top Star Wars pods. They could be considered the top. I don't know what it, what is the top. I don't even know what the top is. Holocronicles, probably. But other than that, <laughs> <laughs> you, 
So he's a little butt hurt. Yeah. Per his own words. Yeah. Butt hurt. Yes. Which is a good way of kind of diffusing, like, look, I'm I'm admitting I'm being a bit of a baby right now. I'm butt hurt. Yeah. I, I, now it, it went a little too far. And of course, it, now it's getting, pr- it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So uh, my, you know, I, I saw, I watched that video. And then I watched him uh, chew out one of his producers. Sure. Yeah, and watch that, that too. And that just so for me, those are those are my only two uh, watches of Collider. Those are the only two things I've ever seen, and it's just been this week. And both were painted in a bit of a negative light. Sure. And so for me, as a result, I'm probably not going to. I mean, I I hadn't seen them prior to this. I saw it, and as a result, I'm probably not going to see any more. Um, the, you know, this the way he went about himself and the, and the business. Whether you know, like you said, you could you could see where his point of view it just came out poorly. And well, and he's he's expressing himself in a I don't know how long their pods or their YouTubes go. Uh, as far you know, it's it's kind of an open forum, and I appreciate that about being comfortable enough to kind of really let it all out. He didn't hold anything back. It's how he really felt. Yeah. And and you couldn't argue about his passion for it. You could tell it was anyone meaning- that's at that angry about not because of their hard work, yeah. not getting the accolade. Yeah. Is passionate, right? Definitely. Now, like you said, m- maybe it didn't come across as good as it could have. Uh but for somebody like me who is just getting into, you know, like we've only been twittering for or tweeting for uh, five, five months, months yeah. and, you know, really hitting the social media on this. This is something that we've just decided to do recently. And, and so we're just, we're just dipping our toe in this whole deal and we're getting to know people and we've already made some, some really cool friends throughout all this stuff. And we've also seen the ugly side of social media as a result through this. And for me, that was that tended to lean towards more towards the uglier side of social media. Oh, it got tr- it got put in that light too, though. It know? did, and and what for I'm me, for me, it was appropriate. If you and I go on a rant, no one's going to hear it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and he's he's just in a bigger forum, yeah. And it's not as if I'm not defending him, the Christian guy. I don't, you know, Christian Harloff. Christian Harloff, good for him, but also. All right. I mean, it worked because I watched a video I'd never watched before. So, well, and like you said, the only reason why it's 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 been in the Twitter sphere is because his platform's pretty big. Yeah. Right. He's got a lot of eyes on him to begin with. So, good on him for that. But kind of a silly reason to be in the you know. Oh, I didn't get to go to Star Galaxies. It's like, well, yeah, yeah me you neither. and everybody else. Like, <laughs> eh, I mean, I'll not, be there in two months yeah. or two years. Now, I think what really got him the beef is like, I'm not going to talk about it which for me is a little bit of a fit. And I think if you talk to him right now and really let him talk it out, he'd be like, of course I'm going to talk. I love Star Wars. I mean, he loves Star Wars, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, I, you know, interesting, but also a little bit of an indicator of the temperate emotion. It's just, it's, it's very, I don't know. You catch somebody on the wrong day, they're going to say something inflammatory sure. into a microphone because... You don't always have in the moment the ability to think about, you know, an hour from now how it's how that's going to come across. Yeah, and I don't think he ever would have imagined that it hit, you know, it would hit. Or I think he probably thought like, hey, don't you agree, fans? If you're listening to me, then you're a part of this right. progression. You want to hear me there so I could tell you about it, which is the whole point of their forum. Yeah, you know, their format. That's that's what they're trying to do. So. Well, I'm not I'm not 100% <clears throat> against it, but I think the delivery could have been you know, could have been better. And the producer was a bit of a butthole at the end, you know. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Look, all I <laughs> as humble potters, all I know <laughs> is that they had like a glass booth for their producer and and the, the, like hitting the mic like Baba Booey and I'm just like, I don't know, these guys are doing fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going on here. This, so, yeah. yeah, this might for them for somebody with a big a platform as them that this might be a a, a net positive. Yeah, for them. it's a net positive for sure. Any um, press is good press. for some for somebody like us with a smaller platform. If anybody rips us, then it's probably yeah, it could hurt. Yeah, it might so st- we love you. Might sting a little. We love you. <laughs> That's why we're a positive podcast <laughs> or try to be anyway. Um, okay, m- moving on. Next uh, little bit of Star Wars news: the actor that played um, the actor slash puppeteer. 
that played Admiral Akbar um, has been pretty vocal about how unceremoniously Akbar was exited from The Last Jedi and his role in the sequel series because, and here's now for me, I can understand both sides of this little back and forth here. Uh, I, I believe the uh, puppeteer slash actor's name is, I have it written down, Tom Kane. And, and he was, he's been vocal about how displeased he was with how Akbar died and his role in, in, the new, in the new sequels. And on the one hand, Akbar has become a kind of a, I would say maybe a, a, he's more of a cult favorite. Sure. Um, in the Star Wars realm of characters. But uh, he's not a main character. He has a main catchphrase. You bet. One um, of the best. You know, he was, he was really featured... And by featured, he w- he had a few lines in Return of the Jedi, and that was it. Well, to be honest, he was an endearing like that. His his phrases, he's not visually fun to look at. Like at, he's weird saw, to look yeah, at. Yeah, he's weird to look at, and you're like, oh wow, that's a, he's a squid. He's a squid, but you got a sense of his, you know, admirality. <laughs> yeah, wow. he's an admiral, so you, yeah. you know. M- Give him props for that. Yeah, I mean, he had to work his way up the the rebellion, <laughs> up the friggin' food chain, and and you know, in expand in old canon expanded universe, his story is a lot more developed. He's a lot more highly regarded. He's featured more prominently in books, and and he has a story that exists not in the movies, but in what is now no longer canon. And so you've got you know some of the older fans that were like, yeah, you know what? They're right. Akbar was a pretty solid, you know, original trilogy character. Based on all of that content. Based on all of the content. Not necessarily based on the movie because he's... Well, there's only so much time in the movie. Well, he was he on was, the screen less than two and a half minutes. But it was also meant to be on the screen less than two and a half minutes. He right. He was that guy. Now, how many... Look, we don't have anybody from from uh, Empire in, in Hoth you know, lamenting about their departure, which was non-existent. We or never saw General him again. Riken. We never saw him again. Yeah, like, hey, congrats. He played a r- small part in a few scenes, and he delivered a great line. And that's who he was in the Return of the Jedi. Now, he had made it all the way up to the sequel movies. And so, what about Wedge? <sighs> don't get me started. Exactly. About Wedge. So chill. I love Wedge. Everyone chill. Well. Maybe I think maybe, that's my tagline for this pod. What about Wedge? Or for all pod, everyone chill. Well, <laughs> I've said that. I remember saying that last pod. Just chill. Well, he's he's more. So anyway, so so Tom's side of it is like, hey, this guy was an important character, and he came and went in the Last Jedi in a blink of an eye. He didn't have any lines. He was kind of an Easter egg in The Force yeah. Awakens. Yeah. You know, he was just kind of a in the background. Is it just me or did he have a did Akbar have a bit of a tan? He looked a little bronzed. Just saying. Really? I'm just checking. Do you out. think it was a like a spray or or just natural? No, no, I, yeah, I think he was hanging out on the shores of Mon Cal- Amon Calamar. <laughs> <laughs> bathing, was ba- sunbathing, or, or swimming well, just I have to under the fleet. <laughs> there it like, is. There it, was, there it is. Uh, it, it was. It delivered. Famous, famous tagline. It delivered. So you know, Tom's side because put okay. a little on my back, would you? <laughs> hey, pool boy. F we are forty. So. So Tom's so here's where Tom, who is an actor slash puppeteer, he says, "All right, everybody, you know, here's <laughs> that might his, be your first problem, actor slash puppeteer." Well, here's the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm the sorry. actor makes the character, even if he isn't the exact person that delivers the lines. All right, right. for example, Peter Mayhew, yes, is exactly who Chewbacca is. Right. The mannerisms, the you know, and even though his vocals didn't end up being what Chewie's vocals were, right? I mean, who Chewie is is who Peter Mayhew wanted him to be, right? And so, and so, you know, uh, Akbar didn't move around a lot. He was mostly seen sitting down uh, in his in his captain's chair, admiral's chair, you know. So he wasn't swiveling like a mofo. Yeah. So he wasn't necessarily moving around 
having mannerisms. I don't remember him having mannerisms at all. In fact, the only movement I remember him having is after the Death Star 2 blows up, he lets out a sigh and sits down. Right. That's the only movement I can recall off the top of my head of him doing. Now, did it take an expert level actor slash puppeteer to do that? You try and you try and blink those he, giant eyes at the he same He would time. argue, yes, he sure. became Akbar because it's personal to him. He's passionate about the franchise. He knows Akbar has a story built up in the expanded universe that is no longer there. That's his side of it. And there are people that are like, yeah, absolutely. You know, Holdo should have been Akbar. Absolutely. That's 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 his biggest take. It's like Here's the deal. Akbar could have done everything that Holdo would have done, and he would have got the hero award at the end of the movie, as well as possibly saving the rebellion, which is a hero move. Instead, we and got also you and you know him. You might not have been as turned off about slapping Poe down. Right. You know exactly. What I'm exactly. Not no. that I was turned off, but what you're saying is like, I don't know who this person is. I actually know who Poe is because prior movie. Right. So far he's done a good thing. He delivered BB to and so, you know, and so you've got Luke Skywalker. Basically. You've got um, Admiral Akbar, who has some clout. He's got some street cred in the rebellion. He's been in battles. You know, uh, not just. I mean, he's got he's got some clout. All right. So sure. when if he were to tell Poe, "Hey, we got it. We don't need you to be a decision maker. We need you to fly." Okay. That might not have flown though. That might not have gone over with Poe. It, it still it, might with not the movie. Have. No, no, with the movie, I mean, because Poe might have been yes, Admiral, but instead, instead, purple hair. Now we've got Vice Admiral, which we all know Vice Admiral isn't as high as Admiral. Yeah. Okay. And we got a new character we don't know anything about. Just Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so now, now she. Now some people would say, "Well, you're just saying that because she's a woman." Well, no, I'm not. We don't know anything about Holdo. We don't know what. We don't know where she came from, her backstory, anything that we had on Akbar. So the people that are Team Akbar on this are like everything that Holdo did should have been Akbar. It would have been better received. It would have maybe made a little bit more sense in the on. big picture. But hold on, that's would, Team Akbar. But would Poe have received it the same way he did? I Which is what they wanted in Jedi was for Poe to be rebellious. Right. But if Akbar delivers it, is Poe rebellious? Maybe well, not. Even if he is, I think I think you build that tension between him and Akbar a little bit because you've got a known quantity with a new known quantity, and they're contentious with each other instead of an unknown with a known. And then it's like, well, why is this, you know, we don't know the motivations behind. We don't know. You know this and that. There were a lot more questions with Holdo than there would have been with Akbar. Even if Poe ends up disregarding Akbar's, you know, commands, then then the mutiny part of it becomes a lot bigger of a deal to, to the viewer because oh, he's, or, he's going against Akbar, like, that's, or maybe not believable. So maybe that's why you have to bring in somebody else. Yeah, maybe. I mean, here's the deal. So, so let's go back to the point we talked about. People passionate about the fans. Or Close. Fa- we'll stay on Akbar for one more minute. Okay. Okay. Akbar being unceremoniously disposed of. Get in line. Get in line. No. <laughs> but but then again, we kind of talked about that. Look, there's only so much time in a movie. You could have the Akbar movie. You can have the solo movie. Whatever. But you know how unceremonious was it? He died on the bridge of a battleship. As w- was his rank. He went out the window and didn't have force powers to Mary Poppins' ass back in. That's the way it goes, right? However, I don't think it was unceremonious. I, I'm okay with, like, I didn't expect to see Akbar. And then he was there, and I was like, that was Akbar. Hey, <laughs> he's still a- around. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hole. And he went right out of it. So he, fine. Yeah. But, and, and, and I get it. I get the whole, you know, the, we're, the passing of the torch and the change of the guard and my whole thing I was trying to press you on was like alright Holdo doesn't have the clout so that creates the mutiny or creates the tension Yeah. whereas Akbar says shut your ass, shut your mouth Poe and he's like okay wow you you were at the battle of Endor right and he's like I'm <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, so so the the other Enough side of Akbar impersonations. The, Can we move on? The other side of that argument is like like you were saying. He was he was a secondary player in a movie in the original trilogy. Oh, of course. He didn't have a huge part to play. He does have a character though in the vintage line. Which he is, does, which that's something. That's saying something. And uh, he even has a very variation of that. Right. Um, tan. Is, <laughs> tan. <laughs> and so, um, so like, yeah, the other side would say, like, well, you know, how how much of a role did, were you expecting him to have? He barely had a role in the originals, and, you know, he delivered a memorable line. And the thing that, that he was kind of upset about was that when uh, shooting for The Last Jedi wrapped, they wanted him to say, you know, clap the, the movie. Um, oh, what's that called? The, the clapper? The, I don't know. The, you know, black and white. Sure, I got it. You know. Everyone knows what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, and at the end, he wanted to, they wanted him to say, it's a wrap. You know, yeah. and then, but he thought he was totally incensed by it. it like, oh, of oh, they're, course, they're He's just like, mocking me. I am an actor, a slash puppeteer, professional. Yeah, no one tells me. And so he took offense to it and has been vocal about it. And some people were like, "Dude, chill." In the words of Josh Moe, "Thank you, dude. Just chill. You weren't going to have a big part in this anyway. Be thankful that you had a part in this and got to continue into the sequels where many characters did not." And others are like, well, yeah, but that's Akbar. He had a huge... And the, then other people come back, push back. Yeah, that's not canon anymore. Whether you like it or not, th- those stories aren't a part of the new canon. And so so there's this back and forth, uh, and, and people on both sides, young and old, passionate about their fandom, each taking a strong stance and sometimes combative. And, uh, and, and I think... Neither one is really wrong. I, can, I don't either. I can very plainly see. I can play Akbar side all both, day both because sides I love him, and I only love him because I've had you know thirty years to watch him. Right? Yeah. Over and over. I mean, even the NFL uses <laughs> Akbar's famous line. Right? Yeah, it's a trap. Yeah, and for any pulling guard plays. That's right. <laughs> no, no, no. I was talking about the NFL Network, but yeah, I won't get into that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I guess you know. So the, those were those were a couple of instances with the collider and with uh, Tom Kane, where we're being passionate and you know can get you into some arguments on Twitter. And ultimately, you know, there there are people that are very passionate um, that call themselves a part of the fandom menace that they are like original, strong, and and like Luke deserved better and Han deserved better and and they better not kill chewy and you know they're, they're very original oriented because that's what made it so successful and to a degree they're they're right mm-hmm. you know and and then but star wars has always been about kids and it's a kid's story that's being perpetuated and there have been some adult moments in these kids shows but it's ultimately about the kids and so these sequels are being made for the new batch of kids. And so not everything is going to go the way that some 40 year old or 50 year old or 60 year old might think it should go. And as a result, there's this tension, sure. like there's this push and pull there's it's, is it, would we consider it balance, Josh? Yeah, no, it could be, it, we could be operating in the gray. The, this could be their whole plan. <laughs> it really could like, be. How do we manipulate Twitter? <laughs> We set two groups of right, fans, fans against each other who are fanning uh, for the same product. Yeah, and their sales motiv- are up. Their motivations are different, but ultimately, it it just perpetuates the bottom line for Disney slash Star Wars, and all it does is generate interest. Now, there are those that say, you know, boycott Episode Nine, and uh, you know their their plans are to buy a ticket for another movie and then go hop into Star Wars Episode Nine and watch it, but they're not giving their money towards, you know, whatever. You're cheating the system, but ultimately, everyone, you're going to see it. Everyone has a great idea on the internet. Yeah. You're, Mean that out. You're going to see that, and and that's, the, that's ultimately what they want you to do. They want uh, your eyes on it, and that's what's going to keep the franchise going. So, I mean, in closing, really, with the, with the fans, with the fanatics, with the passion of the fanatics, I mean... What else do we want out of this? I, I think we just have a forum to talk, and and yeah, I, I'd like to see a hundred things, and I think we're gonna get a hundred things. That's what's cool. I, I 
I, and I, twenty I, of them are going to be. I will. That's how we would have done I it. I will openly. And eighty admit, of them would have yeah. been like, "Oh wow, I never would have gone that way or thought of that." Oh, by or, the way, I was just telling you, I watched Empire. The you know, uh, arguably the the best Star Wars movie. If you, especially if you go back to some. It's goofy as hell in some point. I mean, Yoda is really a goofy character. <laughs> He's goofy. He's goofy. All right? He's in... I, now, by the way, I love Yoda, but when you watch him, you know, uh, with with a little bit of perspective, I'm like, let me let me check this out. It's it's a puppet. Yes. It's a puppet with weird eyes. And, and by the way, I've already made this claim. Yoda, as knowledgeable and, and masterful as he is, likes to be wrong. He loves to be wrong. He is. We consider him a wise old sage, but he If Luke had listened to Yoda, I, what would have happened on Bespin? Nothing except yeah. for Han going, you know, and then Luke, be, I don't know, being a better Jedi, probably. That would have been it. But he wouldn't have confronted, found out he had a father who happened to be Darth Vader, lost a hand. Yeah, actually, probably Yoda was right, now that I'm saying that out loud. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Chewie and Leia would have had to stay at Best Bin. Sure, sure. Lando yeah, stuck forever. Yeah, Lando maybe makes his moves. Mm. I'm just saying. Just watch Empire. My whole point being is that, that, that nothing's perfect. It's only perfect in hindsight. And and you were talking about all this, and all I could think about, I almost I typed it in and just didn't pull up enough data. But it's like go look up bad reviews for the prequels. The hatred that the and we've already said this. The yeah. hatred for the putrel, uh, putrels, whatever. Hey, new term. <laughs> putrels, putrels. Uh, the prequels. A hatred that was out there. It's no different than what we're getting right now. So yeah, and I'm hopeful for episode nine. I think that JJ, much like a Sonic the Hedgehog rework, AJ has heard loud and clear. I think we're gonna tie this all together. I think we've had little clues all the way through that may just pull it together enough. I don't know. You never know because there's a lot of negativity. That's but. the hope. That's yeah. the hope. You know, we're never... JJ is not going to please everybody with no. everything. And he's not really supposed to. And we've said this before on the podcast. If your predictions become your expectations, then you're going to be disappointed. Right. Because you're not making this movie. I'm not making this movie. No. Josh, you're not making this movie. I'm not. So... All right, that kind of wraps up our content for yeah. the podcast. Is and, it time? And now... Woo! We don't have a drop. Time. Oh, shoot. We didn't make like a little game show drop we didn't, or anything. But that's okay. We can... Uh, I, I mean, I don't know. You got one more minute of... It. No, I'm just kidding. No, no we won't do that. So what we asked our listeners and followers to do was to retweet on Twitter, obviously, um, the podcast with the hashtag retro and that would get you in the running for a target exclusive set of six retro figures right um they're going for 9.99 at target but if you can find if them. you can find them <laughs> you can find them on ebay for twice that amount they're, sure. they're going for double that pretty regularly i just checked on ebay today you bet they are routinely going for the 100 and teens Yep. And if you throw the seventh figure Tarkin from the game oh. board in, it immediately goes up Which, to by about the way, 130. We are not. <laughs> no, we are not. We're doing we're doing the we're six. We're just doing the six. Tarkin's on you, but Tarkin is actually a little more available right now because uh shells are being uh being stocked with the uh Death, Escape the Death Star game. So go get that right now. Tarkin's on a card inside that box. You may not know it by looking at it. It's very cool too. Yeah. It's very it's a very sexy All right, we're going to spin. We so what we've done here, we've put all of the people that have done that, that have retweeted with the hashtag um, retro, and we've put a, we've assigned them a number, and you're going to hear a spinner, a random number generator. Yeah, it's a wheeldecide.com. Wheeldecide. W H E E L decide.com. Yes, play on words. Woo-hoo. So we've assigned all of the people that have retweeted a number, and we are going to randomly select a, a retweeter. On this pod right now Tell to me when. see who wins the retro set. The, the retro set of six figures. All right, Andy, you ready? Three, two, one. Spin it, Josh. There's supposed to be noise. Beep, 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 beep. Why is it beep. the noise? I don't know. Are you ready for the number? It's a low one. Okay, so, okay. What number is it? Numero. Dose. 
two. Number two. Number two. That's going to be at True Green Arrow. Wow. Now, there was somebody... Now, ironically, for this one, somebody tagged him in this and said, you need to do this. Oh, really? He got... He got he, he got, got alerted. Mentioned. He got mentioned, and it's a uh, his tag is Swervy MC. Wow, uh, there's a little Swervy symbol. I don't know what that symbol is. It's a, it looks like the top of the pie symbol. You know, sure. like a little wave. Yeah, it's, and then uh, capital MC. It's the farthest left top button <laughs> on your keyboard below the escape key. <laughs> oh, all right, thank You're you, welcome. Josh. But it's at True Green Arrow. We will try to get a hold of you and. You have a couple days there you go. to respond. Or we'll spin again. Or we're spinning again. So congratulations. Well, congrats. Congratulations. I hope you live in the United States. But if you don't, we will overcome that shipping cost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so congratulations. You will lose one figure. Congratulations. For every country you are east <laughs> of the United States. Oh, uh, well, congratulations at True Green Arrow. We are happy to do this for you, and we are thankful. Yeah, exciting. We're thankful that, uh, again, somebody else's passion for Star Wars tagged you in a tweet that you then retweeted with the hashtag retro. This is the passion of the fandom, the passion of the fanatics coming out to work in people's favor. We love hooking people up with... Like the best thing for me as a collector is to get what sharing. I want. Sharing. And it's yep. also to make sure the people that get what they want. And let's look at it together. Yes. And let's talk about it and let's be excited and happy about Hold this on. together. Are we going to finish this up right now? We're going to finish this Are up. Are you ready? I'm ready. Do we need to tag what it is? What do you mean? What I mean, do we, do we need to explain what it is? We got a new outro. We well, do have a new outro, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You get ready to hit that outro, and I'm just gonna give the one thing that has never been said but should have been. Are you ready? <laughs> I don't know. Andy doesn't know what I'm saying. I, I, I'm, just get ready with that button. Thank you. Follow us. Follow us at Hollow Chronicles on Twitter and Instagram and all those other places. Look us up. We'll be there for you. And remember, it's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Turn your mouth